Hi, my name is Maggie with Lighthouse Immigrant Advocates. This video is designed for all of our volunteers assisting with our asylum clinics. So let's get started. First of all, welcome. Oh my goodness, we're so excited. We have so many volunteers and community members helping with this process. We've already had uh, amazing volunteers help with the intake portion of these legal clinics for our Afghan clients. So we're so thankful that you are joining or rejoining in the next step of this process. Um, Lighthouse Immigrant Advocates is a nonprofit law office and advocacy center located in Holland, Michigan, and we serve the entire West Lakeshore. We serve by providing high quality legal services, educational content, and advocacy services. What we expect of our volunteers. Obviously, confidentiality is very important, as well as professionalism, cultural sensitivity, kindness and empathy, and of course, patience. Why do we need an asylum clinic? After Afghans were evacuated from Afghanistan following the Taliban takeover, many were admitted to the United States under a special humanitarian parole program called Operation Afghan Refugee, also known as OAR. This is a temporary status valid for two years. So far, Congress has not made any other remedy available to Afghans to seek permanent immigration status in the United States other than the expedited asylum processing and more recently TPS has been uh, granted. To qualify for asylum, applicants must apply within one year of entry or admission uh, of admission to the United States. So within a year that they came to the U.S., they must apply for asylum. Failure to apply within one year of arrival may make it very difficult for Afghans to qualify for asylum. Agencies like Lighthouse coordinated legal services uh, to make sure Afghan arrivals do not fall through the cracks and miss the opportunity to apply for permanent immigration status. Now, where are we hosting our clinics? Obviously, we will have clinics taking place at our Holland office. Those will be on Wednesdays. And we also are partnering with local resettlement agencies to house at their facility, which would be both in Grand Rapids. Tuesdays will be at Samaritas and Thursday will be at Bethany Christian Services. And we're looking to run these clinics from May until October of 2022. What will we do at the workshop? Uh, we'll have three different types of volunteers. We'll have hospitality volunteers who will help with registration, making sure clients are um, comfortable, have refreshments, are playing with the kids. Our application assistant volunteers will be the morning portion of the clinic, and they will help prepare the first four pages of the asylum application, as well as two other documents. Um, clients will already have arrived with a large questionnaire already filled out. Uh, the answers they've provided in that questionnaire will feed directly into the asylum application. And then in our afternoon, we'll have our volunteer attorneys take over and they're responsible for filling out the rest of the asylum application, also known as the I-589. Uh, they'll be working on crafting narratives that explain their fear of returning to Afghanistan, harm they may have experienced, uh, just the big reason why they're seeking asylum. As far as the flow of the clinic, uh, it'll go through different stages throughout the day. They'll begin at the registration desk where we verify that their questionnaire is complete. We'll work on copying, scanning, printing um, any documents they may have brought, as well as sign uh, a, a an asylum clinic retainer agreement. Uh, that'll all be taken care of at the registration desk. Um, a face sheet that also um, includes that retainer agreement that they sign will be placed on a clipboard. And on the back side of that uh, document, I'll show you in just a moment, has a big checklist of all the tasks that need to be completed the day of clinic. That clipboard will start at the registration office, be handed to the client, and move them on to our pre-clinic. Uh, they'll go to uh, one of five laptop stations where they'll meet with the application assistant volunteer. Uh, this is where the volunteer will assist them in filling out the first four pages of the asylum application, as well as a G28 document and a G1145 document. 
Uh, after their morning session, we will break for lunch. Uh, that'll be a time for the client to refresh, get um, uh, refreshments of some sort. Uh, and it'll also be our time to kind of pass the torch between our morning volunteer and our afternoon volunteer. Uh, our afternoon volunteer will come in, get any necessary information from our morning volunteer, um, and then begin our afternoon asylum clinic. That's when our volunteer attorneys will the rest of the asylum application. Uh, they'll also need to identify supporting documents uh, to go along with that asylum application. Once they're done with the volunteer attorney, uh, make sure to keep checking off uh, items on the clipboard with the uh, checklist. Uh, we'll then move into a review station where um, our asylum uh, attorney will be reviewing those packets. They'll work on signatures of various documents and verify that we have the appropriate supporting documents. And then they'll move to checkout. This is where we will print a fresh copy of their asylum application that's just been completed, slide that into a manila envelope for them to bring home. Uh, we will also give them an exit document that just explains the next steps and kind of what to expect in this process. Uh, going back to the registration desk when they first begin, this is where we'll show them the face sheet. Um, this is uh, just helps us keep track of uh, the client's pro progress throughout the day. Let me show you what that looks like. Uh, the front page has uh, their identifying information, case number, name, phone number, email, address, any other case numbers associated with them, whether it's spouse or children. And that bottom portion uh, is their uh, retainer agreement. They will sign and date that right at the registration desk. Uh, and then the back side of that document is the checklist. That'll go right on the clipboard, pass to the client, and move to the first laptop station. And these are all checkpoints that we need to complete throughout the day. Um, we ask that volunteers are initialing each uh, step that's completed, as well as uh, writing their name, whether they are a morning Okay, registration station, we've discussed a little bit, but this is where we verify they've completed that uh, questionnaire. We've copied, scanned, printed documents, and also verify that all family members age 14 and older are present. Uh, they do need to be present for the time of completing that asylum application and make sure they get started on any refreshments, snacks, tea, what have you. The pre-clinic station, that's our morning station uh, where our application assistant volunteers will uh, be completing three documents with them. That'll be the G1145, the G28, and the I-589. The I-589, that's the asylum application. Um, as the morning volunteers are going through that information, we do ask if there are any documents that they see that are not in English that you separate those from the rest of their folder. We will have a clear cover sheet um, for a, a cover sleeve for them to slide any documents that are not English into that. And the cover sheet here on the left will um, help us identify what those documents are. That just makes it a little bit easier for us after the fact to pull, send to our translation service and um, have them translated before we send the official packet to the US government. So as you're going along, uh, both our morning and afternoon uh, volunteers, be sure to take any documents that need to be translated, place in that plastic sleeve. Each, every single individual client will have their own plastic sleeve in their own folder. Um, so if you do have documents identified for a child, make sure it stays with their folder, but in their own plastic sleeve. Um, after the morning session, again, there's a break time. This is where we pass the torch between the morning and the afternoon volunteers, sharing any necessary information regarding the application, um, you know, any uh, helpful tips in communicating with um, the client, making them feel more safe and protected, and any information that the volunteer attorney may need to know. Uh, in the afternoon, the volunteer attorney will take over. Uh, this is where they'll 
review those first four pages of the asylum application, uh, then they will complete the remaining pages, uh, five through nine, together with the client. And this is really creating that narrative about why they are seeking asylum. Um, this is also making sure they identify any supporting documents. And of course, as we've mentioned, any documents that need to be translated are slipped into that plastic sleeve so, they're, uh, so that our team is aware what we need to send to the translation service. Moving on to the review station, this is where our asylum attorney will be uh, reviewing the packets. They will do all of their signatures at this time. Um, we'll verify that we have all the supporting documents needed and then they'll move on to our checkout station. Uh, this is where we print off the copy for the client to bring home. I'll show you what this looks like here. We'll have a manila envelope like this. We'll print a copy, slide that right in there, and we'll also have an exit document for the client to take home so that they know what the next steps are in this asylum process. Uh, we do want to say patience is a virtue. We understand clinic days can be very busy, a little bit hectic as we're trying to uh, get documents sorted and um, get the necessary information with our clients. But um, we love how well our volunteers have done in the first portion of our clinics. <coughs> Excuse me. Always great to be coughing on a recording. Um, we ask just stay focused on the person in front of you. Um, that's our main goal. If you do find that you need any kind of break, um, these are traumatic experiences that our clients have been through and that can have a big effect on our volunteers as well. So if you do need a break, please let the uh, program coordinator know, uh, take those breaks if you need them. We wanna make sure that you feel supported and cared for as we are dealing with um, some traumatic instances that our clients have been through. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you from Lighthouse, from our resettlement agencies, from our Afghan clients. We could not be doing this without all of your help. Uh, if you do have any questions, if you're interested in assisting in other ways, uh, feel free to send us an email. That's oar at lia-michigan.org. Otherwise, we will see you for asylum clinics, and we're just really excited to be partnering with you. Thank you so much.